Megami and Yuta are two fighters that people rarely put against each other. A far more common topic being can Yuta beat Maharaga, which has spawned a long string of conversations entirely on its own. The reason for Yuta and Megami not being much of a conversation being that Yuta wins, very one-sidedly at that. Yuta joined Team Gojo after Rika began mauling people in an effort to defend him, where the higher-ups of Japan's Jutsu system wanted to execute him for her existence. Megami being the son of one of the strongest assassins in the world, who was killed by Gojo, has been raised by him since he was 7 years old, Megami becoming a member of Gojo's official team as he got older. Both of them being two of Gojo's students that have some of the highest potential out of everyone in their generation, and the generation that came before them. Megami being one of Gojo's oldest students, Yuta being one of his strongest students, with both of them having the potential to surpass him when going to their peak, fighting each other to the death for reasons that are entirely their own. Yuta Kotsu has been fighting some of the strongest opponents he can possibly run into for his entire career, starting his training with Maki, Panda, and Inumaki in his first year and surpassing them at levels that make them not even compare to each other, fighting a semi-grade 1 curse while barely understanding his own strength, then fighting one of the strongest people on the planet in his very next fight, and growing in the fight and beating him before his rookie year was even over. Megami has had the 10 shadows since he was a child, being aware of how much value the technique had in the eyes of others, but never seeing it as being as top tier on its own, at least not as much as everyone made it out to be. His entire career as a sorcerer has been focused on beating his enemies while reaching this potential that everyone is constantly talking about, while not relying on his trump card to do everything for him, which ironically is similar to Yuta, Megami growing by not depending on Maharaga to do everything for him, the same way that Yuta grows as a fighter by not relying on Rika to fight all of his enemies for him. Yuta doesn't have one curse technique that he can use in a fight. Where most people have a single curse technique that they push to his limits, Yuta has at least five, copying other people's techniques and putting them inside of Rika to take out whenever he sees the opportunity to use them. This is on top of Rika mauling anyone that tries to harm him, even getting stronger when she's separated from him from the rage that she feels internally. Yuta being hailed as someone who would surpass special grade as a limit entirely at his full strength, who single-handedly saved Japan from Suguru Ghetto, if not the entire world, when Suguru activated the Night Parade of 100 Demons, tapping into Rika what seems like an endless well of strength to boost himself to levels that hardly anyone can compete with. Rika and Yuta, when combining their strength, being able to take out an entire group of special grade level fighters in a free-for-all during the culling games. With hand signs, animal summons, shadow powers, a broody face and an interesting haircut, Megami quickly became a fan favorite the more he grew in the series. Even in his first year, he's one of the most complete fighters in the entire series, having an 8 out of 10 on natural fighting ability, a 10 on classroom learning, and a 9 on jujutsu sense. The biggest thing missing with Megami being pushing himself to reach 100% of his full potential, potential that gets spoken about time and time again in the series. Megami's potential is so much of a talked about topic that he has flashbacks about it several different times. Sukuna seeing a fraction of what Megami can do at his weakest state in the series, thinking that him running away from a special grade was completely unnecessary. Gojo, who has special grades running away from him when they see him, even having panic attacks at the thought of fighting him, four on one, saying that once Megami is able to bring out his best, he'll even be able to beat him. As a fight between the head of the Gojo clan, with Gojo's exact same abilities, and a head of the Zenin clan, with the Ten Shadows, already happened, with both fighters ending up dead in a draw. Megami and Yuta pretty much being the epitome of what potential represents in the series, with Yuta's potential being far more realized. Megami having a curse technique that even impresses someone who was the strongest of the most chaotic era in 1000 years and Yuta having a vengeful spirit attached to him that makes all of Japan either want his powers for themselves or respect him for the powerhouse that he is, each of them being powerful in their own right. Megami throughout his time in the story has started out as a very rigid fighter, if not a very rigid person in general, something that makes him draw many parallels to Suguru and the Hidden Inventory arc. Megami being heavily focused on rules early on in the series, and growing stronger once he learns to free himself up mentally, pushing his limits to take 10 shadows to levels that he didn't think were possible. Meanwhile, Yuta spent the entirety of Volume 0 
pushing himself from a regular high school student to a sorcerer that can compete with some of the strongest fighters on the planet. His training being almost entirely focused on mastering Rika's power and channeling it into himself. Yuta then traveling overseas with Miguel after the night parade of 100 demons to hone his strength even further, coming back in the Shibuya arc with more progress than anyone could have imagined. Megumi during the Kyoto event makes more progress than he has at any point before that in the series. He goes from fighting a grade 2 curse and almost being killed to fighting a weakened version of Sukuna and almost dying, to then being dominated by Toto during their entire fight, to then training for an undisclosed amount of time and being able to pressure someone that Toto had an extended fight against for a brief amount of time, fighting Hanami, one of the disaster curses that could walk through an entire group of students at once, and damaging him with Playful Cloud and Hishikigami, then wearing down a finger bearer that's much stronger than the one that Yuji fought in a detention center with his domain expansion and then one-shotting that same cursed spirit with Divine Dog Totality. Yuta, on the other hand, has scaling that goes far beyond anything that Megami has accomplished at any point in time, at least up until the Cullen Games. Yuta in his first year trained to master Rika's powers, and while he wasn't able to tap into them fully when he first started, he did eventually get much better at it over time, going from struggling with a semi-grade 1 curse that he could even keep up with and take damage from, to then pushing himself to a level where he can damage Suguru even growing to a point in the middle of the fight where he can outdo him in speed as well. Suguru being one of the four special grades on the planet at the time, making him one of the strongest people on Earth, a gap that Yuta closed by infusing himself with Rika's strength, making Megumi, someone who at his peak, can damage and keep up with one of the disaster curses, and Yuta outdoing someone who from his ranking alone should be able to handle a disaster curse completely on his own. Megami still making progress on a regular basis with his own strength, and Yuta still having room to grow as well, but being much further along and reaching those top tier levels of strength in the verse. Megami, when comparing him to Yuta, falls very short when putting them base to base. Megami struggling with grade 2 curses in the beginning of the series even gives him a lower starting point than Yuta when he was barely starting to understand Rika's power, as even then, Yuta could take damage from and keep up with semi grade 1 curses, while Megami was almost taken out by a curse that doesn't compare to that. This only gets even more clear as they both progress throughout the series. Yuta in Volume 0 was able to outdo Suguru in speed and pressure him with his bare hands while Suguru couldn't even take him out with Playful Cloud, which amplifies his strength far above what it would normally be. Suguru being a special grade who at a bare minimum should be able to walk through special grade cursed spirits on a regular basis. Megami, once he gets to the end of the exchange event, is barely at a point where he can even damage Hanami while using a weapon that makes him stronger than he normally is, his only way of combating Hanami being Divine Dog Totality and Playful Cloud, not even being able to take out Hanami with his raw strength. As you can see, there is a clear difference between the two characters. Yuta outdoes Megami in all aspects by the end of Volume 0, let alone Yuta once he trains overseas and comes back with far more than he had before. The Yuta we see during the Cullen Games being a different animal entirely, Megami's loadout is based around the Ten Shadows and is heavily dependent on his Shikigami. Megami's Shikigami, being Nue, who can attack from the sky, Max Elephant, who uses floods of water shot from its body, Frog Shikigami to bind weak enemies, Rabbit Escape that takes away his enemy's vision, and Divine Dog Totality, who is pure destruction itself. Megami can also take weapons out of his shadow, like Playful Cloud, that he keeps with him until the end of the exchange event also having it briefly during the Shibuya arc. Megami's domain expansion letting him clone himself and his Shikigami several times as well. Megami's entire curse technique is largely based around pressuring his opponents, attacking them with his Shikigami and his curse tools at the same time, to create more pressure than his enemies can fight back against, eventually leading to a win for Megami, something that he does several times to fight a variety of different people in the series. Yuta's loadout, on the other hand, is almost entirely based on Rika and other people's curse techniques. Rika being a special grade curse spirit that can fight Yuta's enemies alongside him, and the curse techniques that she stores for him being something that he can use until she either runs out of her 5 minute time limit or is damaged so much that she's unsummoned. Yuta only shows one different curse technique by the time the Kyoto Exchange event happens, with his other abilities being shown in the Culling Games, that technique being Cursed Speech, which lets him stop 
blow up, and even kill his enemies on the spot. Yuta has other abilities, like reverse curse technique, that he can use to heal himself from any injury that doesn't destroy his brain. When used offensively, reverse curse technique can even one-shot curse spirits, the same way that Yuta used reverse curse technique to kill Kurorushi. He also has a domain expansion that he shows during the Culling Games, which gets interrupted and doesn't get fully explored. Yuta is typically a fighter that will analyze his enemies before the fight even starts, and continue analyzing them as time goes on. This is best shown during his fight against Kurorushi, where he plans on killing Kurorushi without using reverse curse technique, as he doesn't want to reveal that he has it to the other fighters in the area, Uro and Ryu. Yuta then fights Uro and Ryu and is hit by Uro's space bending technique, immediately figuring out the basic concept of her technique after only being exposed to it for a small amount of time getting that same technique for himself in that same fight, and then using it on a high level to beat an opponent that could pressure him without it. Megami, much like Yuta, is also someone who starts breaking down his opponents from the moment that the fight starts, sometimes even doing this in advance before even fighting his enemies. The best example of this being when Megami is fighting Jiro alongside Yuji, Shibuya, where with a single statement, Megami is able to trick Jiro into revealing enough information about his curse technique for himself and Yuji to beat him, then fighting Kirara before the Culling Games and figuring out her love rendezvous with very little information, other than what he gained in the middle of the fight. Something that Panda wasn't able to do despite knowing Kirara for what may have been years at that point, leading to a defeat that Kirara himself couldn't believe. Megami once again beating one of his enemies with his mind alone. In character, Yuta wouldn't be aiming to murder Megami if they did fight, although there will be a scenario where we cover what would happen if they both went in with killing intent. He would more than likely aim to incapacitate him, if anything, reading his curse technique and taking him out with a single blow. Yuta beating Megami is a very quick process. Megami will summon his 10 Shadow Shikigami to defend himself. Meanwhile, Megami will be rushed by Yuta. Yuta will take out Megami Shikigami quickly with no struggle whatsoever, seeing as with him being a special grade, all of Megami Shikigami are beneath him in strength. Megami will then be kicked with enough force to knock the wind out of Yuji, being beaten until he's incapacitated. Megami will not damage Yuta a single time. Yuta will never have to summon Rika, never having to regenerate with reverse curse technique and only using cursed speech, which he uses through summoning Rika if he chooses to, the actual summoning and cursed technique themselves being unnecessary. Megami's approach will be to break down Yuta as well, although in character, Megami knowing how strong Yuta is would likely summon Maharaga if he felt his life was in danger, although Maharaga is a completely different character, so I'll cover him fighting Yuta in his own video. Megami's main weapons being his domain expansion, his Shikigami, and Playful Cloud making the fight very difficult with what he actually has. Megami will summon his Shikigami, Nue, Max Elephant, and Divine Dog Totality. Nue and Max Elephant being taken out quickly by Yuta's raw strength. The only thing that could lead to any pressure here is Yuta's decision making and Divine Dog Totality. If Yuta isn't going in with the intention of killing Megami, then he wouldn't one-shot Divine Dog Totality with reverse curse technique either. Yuta still being stronger than Divine Dog Totality, but having to beat him in a different way. This gives Megami somewhat of a window of opportunity as the small amount of time that Divine Dog will clash with Yuta will give Megami time to act, Megami using his domain expansion to clone Divine Dog Totality several times before it's annihilated by Yuta. The problem being that this still wouldn't be enough, as even if he's injured, Yuta can heal himself and summon Rika to fight alongside him, taking out Megami, ending the fight, and capturing Megami alive. Megami having no way of beating Yuta, even when Yuta is holding back in a straight up fight even when he's using his domain expansion to double if not triple the pressure on Yuta, as Yuta would be able to deal with it quickly and effectively, Yuta having no reason to struggle against Megami whatsoever. Out of character, Yuta is a completely different discussion. Yuta with intent to kill is a nightmare for Megami and anyone on his level, having cursed speech, Rika, and his reverse curse technique all ready to take Megami down without a second thought. 
Megami once again summons his Shikigami, and this time, Yuta summons Rika. Rika and Yuta splitting up between Rika taking on Megami and Yuta handling the Shikigami. Rika holding Megami in a choke being enough to stop him by itself. Yuta moving the one-shot every single one of Megami's Shikigami with his reverse curse technique. Megami still being held by Rika, unable to move. Yuta then rushes in and slices Megami apart without even needing to use curse speech, which if he did use, would be even more gruesome than anything else. Yuta pulling out a megaphone and using curse speech to blow up Megami and all of his Shikigami at the same time, leaving Megami's remains everywhere splattered on all of the walls around them. Megami being completely beaten by Yuta with no way to counter him. Yuta's only challenge in the fight being to decide how he would kill Megami, not whether or not he can do it, ending the fight very quickly. Megami out of character has a lot at his disposal, but not nearly as much as Yuta. Megami having several Shikigami that he can summon at one time, having a domain expansion, and having Playful Cloud. Megami would immediately use his domain expansion, Shimera Shadow Garden, surrounding Yuta with his shadow from all directions. This being dependent on Yuta and Megami being in a closed area, which for the sake of this fight, will be what's happening. Megami then summons several different clones of Max Elephant, Divine Dog Totality, and Nue all at the same time, unleashing every single one of them on Yuta at once. While this may be somewhat of a challenge for Yuta for a few moments, it won't be enough to stop him, even with Megami using his domain as soon as the fight starts. Yuta one-shotting every single one of Megami's Shikigami, and then taking out Megami with either his katana, using Rika, or using Cursed Speech after summoning Rika. Megami having no way of stopping Yuta, even when he uses everything that he has, all at once. Yuta completely wiping Megami out, whether either one of them have the intent to kill or not. The fight only getting more one-sided once Yuta goes all out leaving Megami in the dust. Megami not being able to kill Yuta, even with his best efforts, being completely outmatched in the fight. Narratively, Yuta is meant to be a bar for the other students to reach, rather than being someone they're supposed to be comparable to this early on. Yuta being someone who's hyped up since the beginning of the series as being stronger than any one of his classmates, even wiping out the Kyoto squad, including Toto, by himself. This is on top of being a war hero, taking out Suguru during the Night Parade of 100 Demons. Suguru and his cursed spirits on top of his squad that he brought with him, being enough of a threat to call every sorcerer in the country, a war that Gojo thought they could lose, which is even confirmed by Suguru himself, a war that Yuta ended with his own two hands. Megami, on the other hand, is a story of potential rather than overwhelming strength. Megami being someone who's built up to reach that top tier level over time, not being someone who's already reached it, making a stark contrast between himself and Yuta. Megami is someone who gradually progresses that Yuta and his opponents would have ended quickly by the end of the war, even then struggling against disaster curses when not having Divine Dog Totality at his side, showing that he still isn't on that level by the end of the exchange event. Whether he's reached that level by the end of the Cullen games being something that has yet to be seen. Yuta's ability arsenal entirely on its own being something that can also outclass Megami. Regeneration that lets him heal from anything that doesn't destroy his brain, with Yuta having one of the highest levels of reverse curse technique in the series. On top of Rika, one of the strongest vengeful spirits ever shown in the story. Rika being so strong that Suru could wipe out every sorcerer in the country with 99% odds of victory. Rika being something that's completely under Yuta's control. On top of Cursed Speech, which by itself can deal with Megami and his Shikigami, let alone Yuta himself. Ten Shadows being a technique that's highly praised from the time it's introduced even having a history that dates back to the Heian era, the golden age of curse techniques, and the most chaotic time period in history. With the strongest person from the Heian era, even praising Ten Shadows as being highly capable in its weakest form. The depths of the technique itself being something that continues to be shown as Megami grows. Although none of the acclaim or actual feats of Ten Shadows equal up to Rika at this point in time. Ten Shadows being in its infancy for the most part. Still having many Shikigami to be revealed and a domain expansion that has yet to be completed. On top of Megami having no regeneration, which makes comparing his arsenal to Yuta that much harder. Yuta versus Megami being a fight that's in Yuta's favor in every conceivable situation. Narratively, Yuta is stronger. Ability-wise, Yuta is stronger. Competition-wise, Yuta is stronger. And Yuta is also stronger when it comes to raw strength. 
This fight isn't a contest by any means. Although when Megami reaches this potential that's so talked about when he reaches his peak, him fighting top tiers will be much more of a conversation. Although that does end the fight for now. Yuta does take this one in every single situation.